In this final module, I'd like to cover some other debugging tools that are built directly into the browser, as well as some options that you might have to integrate additional debugging logic by way of the extension code path. Let's dive in. If we open Edge and navigate to edge colon slash slash edge URLs, we'll see a list of internal URLs that can be used to examine the state and sometimes modify the state of the browser. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. Many of them have internals after their name, meaning that they reveal internal information that's considered especially technical. Others do not. Just walking through down the top, Edge accessibility will help you understand things about the accessibility configuration of the browser, including whether UI automation is detected and in use. Application Guard internals will let you know the current configuration for the Application Guard feature that's in the Edge exclusive. Autofill internals is useful for diagnosing issues with the browser's autofill features. Bluetooth internals does what it says on the tin. Edge Compat is an interesting one. It'll tell you about the configuration of the Internet Explorer site list. Conflicts is a fun one. So this page takes a little bit to load, but basically what it will do is show you all of the loaded modules within the browser. So if you have a case where the browser uh, crashes under certain circumstances or otherwise behaves in strange ways, you can load this page and see every module that's been loaded. Further, you can restrict it to modules that are loaded only in the browser process or the renderer process uh, or those that are configured to delay load. You can also see who signed the modules. So modules that were signed by someone other than Microsoft or, or Windows are particularly interesting. In many cases, however, you'll find that all of the modules are signed by Microsoft because certain modules are only eligible to be loaded in certain processes. In particular, there's a feature called renderer lockdown that prevents loading of third-party modules into Chromium renderers. But here, for instance, we see that within the browser process, there's actually a module that's loaded uh, from a third-party application utility that I happen to have installed. And so this can be useful for diagnosing whether there's anything unexpected running in the process. The crashes page is another very useful page. This will show you the crashes that have been reported up to Watson, including uh, the bucket ID. So if you want to look up you know, the details of a particular crash that have been reported, sending in a bucket ID uh, is a very useful way to point to specifically the problem that you're reporting. Uh, if you have access to Watson, you'll be able to look up the crash report within the Watson system. Edge Flags, as you probably know, offers a variety of experimental flags that are useful for diagnosing issues in the browser or turning on features uh, that are about to ship or uh, turning off features that have just recently started shipping. And so if one individual browser is behaving strangely, this is a good place to check to make sure that there's not any particular experiment uh, that's been turned on by the user that might be impacting. Edge GPU will reveal information about the user's graphics card configuration. So if you have an issue around the browser not painting properly and so forth, the diagnostic information that's provided in this page can be very useful. The histograms page is particularly interesting. So Chromium keeps track of data points called histograms that track things around the configuration of the browser, the performance of the browser, and what's going on. And so there are thousands of them. It's sometimes hard to understand what might be going on. But if you encounter a particular problem, sometimes we'll ask for a histogram to debug what's going on. If I type, for instance, if I filter the list, you can type a query up here to filter. And so my 
I can find all of the things that are related to uh, that have download in the name. So I can take a quick peek and see if there's anything here. So this is a page that's sometimes useful for collecting information about what's happening on the internals of the browser. IndexedDB internals shows the details of the information that's stored in the browser's IndexedDB, which is a web database. If you'd like to test error pages in the browser, there's they're called interstitials. And so you have demo pages for them where you can actually take a look and see what they look like. Edge management will tell you if the browser is under management of an organization. And it has a convenient link to Edge Policy. So the Edge Policy page shows you all of the configured policies and the status of the policy. So for instance, down here, you'll see that I actually have a warning slash conflict, meaning that, hey, there's more than one source that's trying to set this policy. And so as a consequence, this policy might not be, work as expected. You can also see things that are not recognized as policies. You'll see that some of these have a tilde in front of them. I just edited my registry when I'm done testing. And as a consequence, it's no longer the valid name of a policy. And so you'll see that it is an error. And the error is, is that it's not a known policy. Media internals will show the state of media playback controls. And there's options that you can use to flip between the configuration uh, and details about things like digital rights management and so forth. And so if you have a media playback issue, this, this page can be helpful. We've talked about net export previously. That's how you can export a network capture. Net internals is similar, but not quite the same. So net internals will allow you to see information about the configuration of the browser in a live view instead of creating a, a JSON export file. So you can do things like reapply proxy settings or clear the browser's understanding of bad proxies. You can flush the DNS cache. You can flush idle socket pools so you can close all of the browser's active connections. And then finally, and most usefully, there's what's called the domain security policy tab. And this will allow you to see information the browser has about whether or not a given domain should be on the strict transport security preload. Uh, or dynamic, meaning that the user visited the site and the site opted in to strict transport security via an HTTP header. So you can test those. And you can also delete dynamically any policies that were not preloaded. So if you visited a site and sent a strict transport security header and you wanted to clear that out, you could delete all of your browser history or you could delete, individually delete that entry here. There's a page for diagnosing the internals of the new tab page, the behavior of the Omnibox. So if you're trying to understand why a given suggestion was made or wasn't made, you can visit Edge Omnibox and type in your query, the Omnibox being the combined search slash address bar. Password Manager Internals does what it says in the tin. You open this page and then you can open another page and visit a site that has a password form and you can see how the password manager interpreted that form. Edge Sandbox is a page that will show the status of all the different processes in the browser in terms of their sandboxing, what kind of sandbox they're in, whether the sandbox uh, is applied. So for instance, we're starting rollout of sandboxing of the network service process, but you can see that in my case, in this browser instance, it is not sandboxed. You can also see other information about the integrity level and which mitigations have been applied. This brings up another browser tool that we haven't mentioned so far, which is the browser task manager. The browser task manager, if you hit shift escape, or you can open it from the browser system menu, will show information about all of the different processes in use. And so for instance, if you notice the browser is super busy and using a lot of CPU, you can open the browser task manager and you can inspect to find which process is actually doing a lot of work. And so sometimes you'll find that, oh, it's for some reason, the storage service is very busy. And so you can go focus your investigation on things related to the service that's causing a problem. Service worker internals will show you details about all of the browser service workers, and you can stop or inspect the service workers as well as unregistering them. This is somewhat similar to the application tab within the developer tools. Site engagement helps you understand how this browser has been used to engage with various websites. 
And site engagement is used as an input into certain algorithms about how the browser behaves. In Edge specifically, it's partly used to understand whether or not a given potential tracker should be blocked by Edge's tracking prevention feature in balance mode. You can change the values here. So if, for instance, you wanted to tell the browser, you know, act as if you haven't been using GitHub, you can change the score to a number between 0 and 100. So we'll set it to 0. And what this will do is it'll take away the site engagement value for this, this site. So it'll act as if I haven't been interacting with GitHub lately. Sync internals is useful for understanding how the browser's sync system has worked, whether or not there's been a problem syncing data to the server in terms of history or passwords and things like that. System will show you some information about the browser, including whether or not the browser's been enrolled to a domain. In my case, I'm AAD joined, but I'm not enrolled in the domain. It'll show you information about the browser's extensions including some extensions that are not generally visible within the edge colon slash slash extensions page. It'll show you some information about memory and things like that. One of the useful things about this is it's a good way to get a succinct copyable set of information. So if you want to ask a user about which browser extensions they installed, you can have them come here, select the data, copy it to their clipboard and paste it back to you. Edge tracing could be a talk all of its own, but basically the idea of edge tracing is to trace subsystems beyond the subsystems that were traced by the net log. Tracing is an extremely powerful feature that allows you to see how browsers are behaving in terms of every aspect of page load, including JavaScript, including the layout, composition, painting schedule, things like that. The resulting file is a gzipped JSON file that can be reloaded into the same page or using an external UI called the Profeto UI. This is a very powerful feature. If you're familiar with things like XPerf and, and the like in Windows tracing, it offers some of the similar capabilities. Thus far, I've not used this very much, but sometimes it's the only way to understand what's going on. Sometimes an engineer may ask you to have a customer reproduce a problem with tracing active and then send the trace to us for diagnosis. USB internals will show the browser's understanding of connected USB devices, similar to the Bluetooth uh, URL earlier. Version is a page you've probably seen before. And we'll show you deep information about the, about the browser's version, including things like the effective command line. One of the things that's interesting about this page is you see this variations where there's all of these coded numbers. Unfortunately, they're just pretty meaningless hexadecimal numbers. Luckily for us, there is a query string argument that can be passed to the version page that will expand these out into textual definitions. And so I'm using an extension called show browser version. If you click on the link in here, it will navigate to the same version page we were on before, but now with a show variations command query string. What this does is it creates new data at the bottom that shows what command line would have been passed to represent the same set of experiments. And so you can scroll through here and, you know, previously you had some hexadecimal number. Whereas now we have a more ex meaningful experimental name, you know, image search in sidebar. And so using this information, sometimes you can do a comparison between a working and non-working browser to understand how their experimental configuration is different. Finally, there's some URLs that aren't clickable because they do bad things. So for instance, if you copy and paste the edge crash URL into the address bar, the browser will do exactly that. It will crash the tab. If you want to crash the entire browser, there's induce browser crash for reels, and that'll take down the entire browser. Generally, there's no need to do this, but if you want to understand how the big browser behaves, you know, say in crash recovery, you can do this. So we've talked about the built-in features that are exposed by edge URLs. 
The last thing I want to talk about is using the browser's extensibility model to aid in debugging. I recently had a case that's documented on my blog where we had a very interesting behavioral difference between Edge and Chrome. And I had a net log captured, but one of the challenges in a net log is it's sometimes very difficult to understand what's happening at the higher level. You'll see that a given request was made, but you won't fully understand why. We had a browser navigation and sub-download request happening very close together in time, but it wasn't entirely clear as to which happened first. The browser's extensibility model allows an extension to subscribe to events. And so what we can do is we can build a simple extension that will log what's happening as the browser navigates around. So let me show an example of that. Let's open our browser. Because it crashed, it said it exited unexpectedly. Now let's switch into the profile where I have this extension installed. When this browser loads, you see a new window that opens up. And this is, I call it the native messaging meddler. Uh, this is a tool that collects information which has been sent out of the browser from my monitoring extension. So if I search or if I go to example.com and hit enter, you'll see that there's information about navigations taking place. You'll see information about web requests being sent, including which tab they were in, whether they were in a subframe or not, a timestamp. You'll see the response headers event. So you can see exactly what response headers did we get. This is the same information that we would have gotten from a net log, but it's, it's exposed side by side with things like, why was this request even sent at all? And so by using this API, this extension API for monitoring events in the browser and hooking it up to this debug tool where the information is presented in an easy to read fashion, we're able to get a different sort of insight about the browser. Now, all of this information would have been accessible via an about tracing log, but the presentation of those logs is far less clear. And so if you're looking for a lightweight way of just getting an ongoing log of what's going on in the browser, this tool is an interesting one. And there's a link to download it in the deck and on my website.